Hi, I'm Michael Mulders, Developer Relations at Hashgraph. I'll be guiding you through the real world asset tokenization workshop using the Hedera token service, or in short, HTS. But first, let's first understand what HTS is and its key features. The Hedera token service is an integral part of the Hedera network that allows for the creation, management, and transfer of native fungible and non-fungible tokens with the same efficiency and security as HBAR, Hedera's native cryptocurrency. Here's a detailed explanation of what HTS is and its benefits. The Hedera token service provides a native tokenization feature on the Hedera network, enabling users to create and manage tokens directly on Hedera Hashgraph without needing to use smart contracts. Further, HTS supports both fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens. So the key features include native integration, so HTS is built directly into the Hedera network, allowing tokens to leverage the same consensus and security mechanisms as HBAR, High throughput and low latency, due to Hedera's underlying Hashgraph consensus algorithm, HCS supports high transaction throughput and low latency, 45 second finality, fixed price and predictable fees, so transaction fees on HCS are fixed and therefore predictable. And HCS allows you to customize token properties like setting keys to manage the supply, freeze or unfreeze a token or require KYC. And finally, the biggest benefit is the reduced complexity. No smart contracts are needed to create tokens, making development easier and straightforward through SDKs or API calls. For these reasons, HGS is a great service for real-world asset tokenization, as it offers many security and compliance features that are useful when dealing with complex assets. All right, let's dive into the code portion of this workshop. First, I want to show you my base template of code. The base template shows you the setup from which we will build up each code example. The template starts with loading the operator ID and operator key from the .m file. And both of these variables are used to instantiate our client object. We need the client object to interact with the Hedera network. In our case, we'll be using the Hedera testnet. Okay, let's start with code example 1, where we create a wine bottle NFT on the Hedera network. Wine bottles are an excellent example of real-world asset tokenization, as it can be very expensive and can be uniquely described, so you can trade them using tokens. When we look at the code, we see that the base code setup has been used. The first thing we do is to generate a supply key. We need a supply key to sign for minting and burning of NFTs once the NFT has been created. Next, in the try-catch logic, we write the actual logic to create an NFT on the Hedera network. First, we set a token name. I've chosen for a Petrus, which is a famous and expensive wine bottle from France. As the wine bottle is of the year 1996, the token symbol is set to P1996. Further, we need to indicate that we are creating a non-fungible token, but as mentioned in the introduction, you can also create regular tokens. To create an NFT, we need to set the decimals to zero, as an, as an NFT can't be divisible. Further, let's use a finite supply so we can set the maximum supply to one. This means we can only mint exactly one NFT. To actually create a token, let's sign the transaction and execute it through the client object, which will send it to the Hedera network. If everything is fine, the NFT will be created and we can request the receipt for our token creation transaction. This receipt both contains the status, but also the token ID if the creation was successful. Now, let's execute the file by running the node command with the name of the file. It will log the status of the transaction and the token ID to the terminal. All right, let's go to Hashcan where we can look up transactions for the Hedera network and make sure you are on the testnet to look up tokens. So the first thing let's do we do is to look up the token we just created. Here we go. And as you can see, you can find the Petrus P1996 token. It's an NFT. The maximum supply is one and the initial supply is zero. All right, let's move to the second code example. In this example, we'll expand the first code example. Instead of only creating the NFT, let's now mint it. The first part of the code remains the same, but we have a new section of code that is responsible for minting an NFT to increase the total supply from zero to one. The token mint transaction allows you to add some additional metadata. For now, let's just add Petrus 1996 as the metadata. We also need the maximum transaction fee we want to pay for the minting operation. Let's set it to 20 HBAR. If you set it too low, you might not provide sufficient HBAR to pay for the minting operation. You might remember there is a fixed cost for each operation. That's true, 
However, as we are adding some metadata, we need to pay for the bytes that we use. And finally, we need to sign the minting transaction with our supply key, as this is the key that is in charge of minting and burning tokens. Once the transaction is executed, we can retrieve the status again. So now, let's execute the code using the node command, and it should print the success status, the token ID, and the successful minting operation to your terminal. All right, now let's look up the minted token on Hashcan. So let's go back. We look up the token ID. You see the same information. However, the total supply is now one. So we have minted one token. If you go down to NFTs, you can see there is one NFT minted. We just own by our own account at the moment because we didn't send it to anyone else. However, as you can see, there is no image loaded. It shows a default image and the metadata details are also not filled out except for the Patriots 1996 message that we have passed, but nothing else has been included. Cool. Now it's time to add metadata in our third code example. Here, we'll focus on uniquely identifying our wine bottle through metadata so it's easy to retrieve the right bottle. I want to add a couple of things, like its name, year of production, the region and country where the wine has been produced, the grape and alcohol percentage, the serial number on the bottle, and an image of the bottle itself. We can just use the metadata as it is, but there's actually a standard on Adera called HIP412, which we can use to structure our metadata. By using the standard, all tooling that implements it can interpret the metadata we set for our wine bottle. This makes our wine bottle interoperable between different marketplaces and explorers like Hashcan, as they can also interpret our metadata and represent it. Therefore, let's restructure our metadata into the HIP412 JSON schema standard. There are three mandatory fields, the name, image, and type. The name and image are obvious. The type field refers to the mime type of the image provided. In our case, it's image slash GPG. Further, we can also add a description to provide some more information about the wine bottle. The properties field can be used to freely structure metadata in a JSON format. Here, we can add wine-specific details like the year, region, and serial number. And finally, there's also a files array which you can use to add additional pictures of the wine bottle. Often, the image property is used as a thumbnail, and the files array is used to store high-resolution images of your asset. You can use its default file boolean to indicate that's the main image for the asset. Now our metadata is ready, we actually have a small problem. Hedera only allows you to store up to 100 bytes of data into the metadata field. However, there is a clever solution for this. You can upload metadata to IPFS, which is a decentralized storage network where you can host files. They provide you with an address for your metadata file, and this address you can add to your metadata for your NFT. So, we now have our wine.json file, and we would like to upload it to decentralized storage. You can use third-party providers like ThirdWeb, who can help you achieve this. If you use ThirdWeb, you can use social logins to create an account and you can get started with a free plan without entering any credit card details. Once you land on their dashboard, you can click on the settings button and navigate to the storage section. Here you can upload your wine.json file to pin it on the IPFS network and that's it. Don't forget to copy the IPFS address of the file once it's uploaded. To make it simpler for you, I've already uploaded this file and you can use the IPFS address which you can find in the demo code. Now we have the address copied from DirtWeb. Let's assign this to the CID variable. CID stands for Content Identifier. The rest of the code remains the same and we can execute the file with the node command. Again, it will print the token ID and the success status to the terminal. Okay, let's again look our token up on Hashcan. And now you can see again, we've minted one new token and the metadata has been populated because we're following the HIP412 standard, which Hashcan understands. So you can see the preview image, you can see all of the metadata filled in, and the properties are also shown nicely, other additional files are shown here, and the metadata location on IPFS is also highlighted here. You can actually click through and look it up, and you can actually see the full metadata on IPFS through the Pinata Gateway, which is just a service that actually visualizes your data or like looks it up. As a last step in code example 4, we'll modify our code to show how you can fractionalize your NFT. If you remember, you can't set more decimals than zero. However, we can increase the maximum supply. So if we increase the maximum supply from 1 to 10, it means we can now mint 10 shares of our wine bottle NFT. In other words, 10 different people can invest in our expensive Pitters wine bottle. 
that's awesome, right? Let's execute the code again using the node command and the success status will be printed to your terminal. And lastly, let's look up our fractionalized NFT so it has the same metadata. As you can see, two bottles have been minted. It's the same bottle. And we have actually a total supply of two now and there is a maximum supply of 10 